I'm Jeremy and today I'm going to show you a really neat little puzzle game that plays in about uh, 15 minutes for one to four players, ages eight and up, and that is named Trax. Um, this game is published by NSV, as you can see the makers of Quix, which is a similar fast uh, multiplayer game. Um, I'm going to just uh, actually play out a single player game of it just to show you how it works, and I'll come back here and give you my thoughts on it. Okay, so this is a setup for a game of tracks, and each player is going to get one of these dry erase boards and a marker. The uh, board, you'll notice, has a scoring track as well as a layout of hexes. Each player will get a similar layout of hexes, but the start space marked by a dot will be different on each board. The game plays from one to four players. I'll just show you how it plays by playing a solo game. So there's this also this uh, deck of 15 cards, and each round a player will flip up one card and all players will have to follow the instructions on it. So for example if I flipped up this, for my starting space I have to extend a line that only in one direction that goes through up to those five colors. So I could go through from here this white to this yellow to this red to this blue to this yellow. And you'll notice I went through this two, this number two, so I'd be able to score two points like that. Then I have this card and let's see I could go through here green nope can't go that way sorry good thing it's dry erase I could go green red yellow white and that would end my turn because I've used all four you're not obligated however to use all four you can use as many or as like as few as you like also you have the option to extend your line from either end point so you could extend the line from here or from here. But you could not do both during the same turn. Next I get this. Um, this is good. I could go through here, this blue, or this gray rather, red, blue, white. And that would give me three points because I went through the three. And this next one, this is bad luck. Um, I might just choose to go to this red and stop because I don't want to bypass this blue. On the next card, I can go through here. So I could go through blue, red, yellow, and green. And that would give me four points. So this is going to continue on until all 15 cards have been gone through. And ideally, I'll keep acquiring points during the game. So let's see, I have a, a blue, green, uh, white, and I can't use the yellow. I, I could have actually gone through that yellow first, but I don't want to. I want to leave a path at 10. So I'll just use those three on that symbol. Then here, I get a blue, a gray, a green, a yellow. Now I really boxed myself into a corner. I did get that five. Moving on. I can't go onto a red here, so I might want to start filling in spaces over here. So normally I would think more about this. So let's just say I do this. I do blue, I do gray, blue, and I might choose to stop right there. And here, I'm really forced to go forward here, I suppose. All right, so this is fine. I could go um, yellow, green, white, gray. That's fine. And I get the seven points for going through the seven. You'll notice that I skipped the uh, six and that will have repercussions in a moment. Here I have red, blue, gray, green. So I get the nine points for that. And then here, let's see. I feel like yellow, oh, there's no white there. So let's see, gray, white, no. See, now this side, I've very much limited my options, since you can never go back across a path that you've already drawn. So, I'll have to build from here, essentially. Or, I could just do this. I could do yellow, and then red. That'll give me 10 points. Then here, I get... I'll do white, green, blue, gray, blue. Now I've gone over the six on this turn, but since I've gone over a number higher than six, I'll only get half the points of that value rounded up. So instead of six points, I'll get three points. This card 
not what I especially need. Let's see, I could do red, I could do white, I could do green. And that's it. And then, I could do red, green, yellow, gray. And now my options are really limited. I did get a white, luckily. So I could go over that, but again, since I've already gone over the white, or the uh, higher numbers, I only get f half points for that. So, now what I'll do is I'll X off any spaces that I have not gone through. Hopefully I got these all. I'm not trying to cheat. I'm just performing under pressure. I'll record that as, those as negative points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then I'll add up my positive points. So I have 19, 23, 30, 3, 38, 42, 47. So 47 minus 7 is 40 points. And that would be my score. So, this is how the game is going to work. It's going to work very similarly in a multiplayer game. The only difference is that in a multiplayer game, the way it works is the first person to go over a number, so let's say on round one, I'll just erase this. On round one, if I go over this, I would call out two. I would get two points. Anybody else who go went over the two on the first round would get two points. And then in any future round, if somebody says, I've got two, um, they will only get half points rounded up. So like it, at the start, usually the way I keep track of that is if somebody said, somebody will call out as they get a number. So if somebody says at the first round, I've got five, I'll just mark it like that. And then I know if I take the five, I only get three points for it. Otherwise, the game plays the same. You'll go through all 15 cards, tally up scores, and then whichever player at the table got the most points would be the winner. And that's how you play tracks. Okay, so that is Tracks, and uh, this game's published in Germany by NSV, but it is, um, uh, they do have English rules available on their website, and it's language independent, so you could import this probably from Amazon.com or wherever you import your games from, and I don't think there would be much impediment to you playing it. So, uh, the game, as you can see, is very simple. You're just going to draw a card and then extend one of your lines and hope to get the most points at the end of the game. Um, there are similar games like this, I think, where players basically all simultaneously do the same action. Karuba is a one that's recently come out. Uh, Take It Easy is another similar game. And if you like games like that, which are essentially people solving a puzzle at the same time, you know, not doing terribly much to interact with each other, this is a great game of that type. Um, cities would be another example of this kind of game. Um, I think the nicest feature of this, which makes it slightly interactive, as opposed to some of those other games, is the way that the scoring works. It essentially becomes a race to those high values, so you could claim them before other players can, um, because your points are going to be halved, and that could be a game-breaking thing, you know, it, over the course of this game. And you know, the way that the cards work, essentially limiting your actions each each round and um, the fact that you get negative points for hexes that you don't fill in becomes a factor as well just because you want to race and you want to make sure you hit as many of those point scoring markers as you can but if you get too choosy in the cards you're going to have a lot of negative points from hexes that you didn't fill in so you know this is like I said you know, I'd like you've just seen a very light game um, I've actually bought two copies of it and we've played with more than four players and that has gone over just fine even with the scoring competition that doesn't really seem to alter the game too terribly um, and it's something that I've really enjoyed my plays of so you know I would encourage you to check it out if this is the sort of game that you like if you don't mind it there not being a terrible amount of interaction and you really like puzzles it would probably be a game for you so that is Tracks and thanks for watching.